17 years old and I sat down and I wrote my first novel. And I like to argue this is what happens when you're 17 because you just don't know any better. I had a book in my head, I wanted to write it, I told the story. And then like a lot of aspiring writers, when I was done, I put it under my mattress because I never really thought of publishing, I just thought I wanted to write a book. It was only later talking to other people where it became clear that it was odd to sit down and just write a book and that perhaps normal people did not spend their summer vacations writing a novel. It occurred to me, maybe I'm a writer, maybe I'm supposed to be an author, maybe I should do something with this. And I was very lucky. Three years later, following a book I got from the library, How to Write and Sell a Novel, I did sell that book. Complete strangers went to bookstores and purchased and read this thing, and I got the bug. So I wrote another one and another one, and 10 years later, I came up with an idea of this great thriller where a serial killer escapes from maximum security prison and wrecks havoc on everyone who put him there, including his ex-wife and their child. And that became the overnight success of The Perfect Husband. My thought was, I need to know what prison is and how you would break out of it. So I got myself brave, and being, I think I was 22 at this time, I called Massachusetts, the Walpole, our maximum state prison, and I said, I'm a local author and I would like to do research. And like, okay, and it's like, I'm gonna write a book where they break out of your prison. Can I come and have a tour? It turns out, no. <laughs> Lisa Gardner realized research, especially with law enforcement officers, would be the key to her success. I wanna bring an experience to life. And so I need to understand what that experience is. I'm always fascinated by the psychology of crime. You know, what makes a criminal? What makes a detective? I love those newspaper articles where, you know, there's some guy and they just found six bodies in his basement. So while it's always great to call and talk to people in law enforcement and have some interviews to learn skills, I think the most fun research I had was for Catch Me, where I researched with 911 dispatch operators. And they're a very, very important piece of law enforcement. No one ever thinks about it. They are the ultimate first responder. They are on the other end of the phone. And when people were jumping off the Twin Towers, they were the ones who took everyone's last words and statements and made sure they got them to their families. I mean, there's been domestic dispute cases where they are the one who are comforting the children in the closet while the parents are waging battle out front. But sometimes Lisa's research led her to some very dark places. The hardest book I ever wrote was Live to Tell. It is the only book I've ever written that was actually based on a real story of someone close to me. And it involves the story of mental illness in young children. And it was really a fellow mom, a woman I knew we served on the board of the same organization. She kind of disappeared for a summer. And when she came back, we all kind of generally speaking, making conversation, it's so nice to see you again. Gee, where have you been? And she sat down and she looked at us all and she said, we started the summer with our seven-year-old son trying to kill us. We've been in a lockdown psych ward in Boston. They worked with some of the top experts in the country, including a specialist out of Boston. Interesting enough, what led to this final incident when he tried to kill them and his sister was they'd put him on antipsychotic meds and he had an adversarial reaction to them. And the antipsychotic drugs made him psychotic. As a mom, I couldn't imagine anything more terrifying than being afraid of your own child. And there's not resources, what do you do? Well, I'm a suspense novelist, anything that scares me now you have a starting point to write. So I ended up spending time in this lockdown psych ward in Boston. This book was the hardest I ever had to write, as a mom and as an author. But I'm most proud of how it turned out because there are some answers in it as well. What has surprised you, if anything, looking back about your career, about how you have achieved everything that you have? I think any writer out there, you start because you love books. And to wake up one day and actually realize that complete strangers out there read you and respond to the novels and can't wait for the next one. It's, it's random things. It's the first time I saw someone on a plane reading one of my books and it was like not my mother. I mean, you're in this business because you love books and to realize that you're now producing some of the books other people love, it is the most humbling, best job in the world. So the one moment where I thought I arrived was in Stephen King's recent novel, Dr. Sleep. He actually refers to Lisa Gardner. He is my hugest hero, and the fact that he has this one page where one of his characters is looking at a Lisa Gardner novel. So, you know, Stephen King knows that I exist. I just, I just get all warm and tingly all over. <laughs>